Hello and welcome back to my YouTube channel. How are you doing and how have you been? And I hope you're keeping warm and safe, especially during this time that we have a lot of rain. So, and today even my, my good friend Lamek from the CEO of Sabab Adventures gifted me this very beautiful hoodie and I'm feeling all warm and snuggly. So, please stay safe, stay warm and... Um, always put on your masks okay also ensure the covid 19 protocols are followed okay welcome back to my youtube channel a new video new week and uh today we are going to talk about um the international candlelight memorial which is a uh, an event held by the global network of people living with HIV every year to remember people living with HIV and people who have succumbed due to HIV and AIDS over the years and uh, they say we remember we take action and we live a life beyond HIV and that is what we're going to do this week so if you have lost a loved one due to hiv and AIDS, just comment with the candle on the comment section and i'm going to leave the link for the candlelight memorial website so that you can just light a virtual candle for them and we keep remembering them that the, we are continuing with this life and we are hoping that at some point you're going to hand hiv and aids as a whole and thunder just striked yeah, it's just striked. So, uh, today uh, I'm going to talk about um, my late brother because, as you know, I was born with HIV. It's now almost 29 years after I was born with HIV. And uh, I have three other siblings who are all alive but not living with HIV. And I have... Um, uh, one sibling who succumbed to HIV and AIDS and my mom is obviously living with HIV and my dad is not living with HIV. You can follow that story on uh, where I when I hosted my parents for last year during my birthday. So today we are going to talk about my brother and remember him a little bit. Uh, my brother was born five years after me. His name is Julius uh, Marete Mwagi Moracha. <laughs> But we used to call him uh, Kamawe. Uh, it's actually, I think it's me, my big brother and him who have uh, pet names. Uh, my big sister and my last born brother do not have pet names. They're just called by their names. But us, I think we are like the favorites of the family. <laughs> so uh, Kamawe passed on when he was just three years old. He was born five years after me. And um, he he was a very jovial little boy. He was... Like everybody in the family loved him, like everyone, not even just the, 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 the nuclear family, even the extended family. He was a very beautiful baby. I think one of the most beautiful babies I've ever seen. <laughs> and, um, he, he was those children who you just, like he was three, but he used to talk like a person who is older than his age. I, I, I've seen on TikTok people telling us toddlers that they have old souls so i think he kind of had like an old soul in him because he was those those ch children who are just so smart at a very young age and um unlike me who started getting sick at the from six months for him he never got sick at all he was just okay until when he turned three then he just became sick all of a sudden and he got kaposi sarcoma kaposi sarcoma is one of the opportunistic infections that affect people living with hiv and uh, just like meningitis and tb most of the time you find that hiv does not exactly kill but the um, the, the opportunistic infections are the ones that kill because they kind of affect your immune system which cause it's already um, com compromised. Compromised, that is the word I was looking for. It's already compromised. So my brother died uh, in a very sudden way. Like he was, he had been in hospital and he had gone from bad to worse to now feeling way better. And then on the morning that he actually died, 
uh because i remember I used to sleep in the same bedroom me him and my mom uh my dad was not in the country so we, uh, most of when my dad was away we used to sleep in my mom's room so he woke up in the morning and just looked at my mom and uh, as she was preparing herself to go to school and uh told her mom you know when i grow up i'm going to fight everybody who makes you angry and mom just laughed it off and told him okay now fine go to sleep and then uh your brother is going to take you to hospital and then i'll meet you guys there and that day i actually decided that you know i'm not going to school i do not know why i decided i don't want to go to school but i did not go to school and my mom did not even fight me over it she just let me stay at home so uh my brother was taken to hospital by my elder brother and um when at around 11 he actually died in the same month this month of may i think it was around may 17th there about and uh he my, my big brother called us we used to have a landline in the house and uh, told us um amanda in swahili which just means he's gone our household started crying as for me I did I didn't cry. I just I I think I became numb because I was wondering how did it how did he go? He was supposed to come home. He was supposed to be fine. Like this was his last checkup. So why has he gone? Why has he left me alone? And throughout the years I kind of felt like he was given the easier way out than I was because now I had to grow up with this um health condition and fight it and fight the stigma and deal with everything that comes with it the whole nine yards and him he just he just could like he was just taking away and then i was the one left to experience the whole thing but um i know for a fact that he is he is in a better place because it's been almost 23 years since he died uh yeah it's over actually 23 years since he died and um when he died, my, my mom became very depressed, even became alcoholic. Like, it was like, you know, a parent experiencing a child being uh, buried is, is honestly a very unfair thing because it hits the family in a very bad way. And that is why most of the time when I see, especially what our government is doing by denying children living with HIV, ARVs, I feel so bad because these children don't really deserve it. We are not in the 90s. I am a person who lost a child, uh, a, a bro my brother who is uh, who was a child, to HIV, and it does not feel right. I ended up being born with HIV, and it does not feel right. So in 2021, we can't really afford children being born with HIV. But because my brother is gone, and I am left to continue fighting, to continue advocating for this virus against the stigma uh, for availability of treatment for availability of prevention i will continue living a life beyond hiv and as uh, the slogans for the international candlelight memorial say we remember we we take action and we live a life beyond hiv and aids for my brother, for every person who has died due to HIV and AIDS, I will remember, I will take action, and I will keep living a life beyond HIV. Because HIV is just a tiny virus, and I cannot give it the power over my life, and neither should you who is watching this video. So if you have reached this end of the video, thank you so much for listening to me. And uh, if you've lost any uh, loved one, uh, over the years please comment with the candle and uh, also you can light a virtual candle on the international candle light memorial website thank you so much don't forget to subscribe like share leave a nice comment on the comment section and see you next week with a brand new video bye, -bye. and send me gifts send me gifts you see be like lamek and send me nice gifts <laughs> Bye. <laughs>